Hello and welcome to Agedic Tutorial. This video was created by Martina Humbert, Business Manager for Composites at Math to Market. My name is Janine Hilden, Application Engineer at Math to Market, and I will show you on the following video how to model a glass fiber roving using our fiber generator module FiberGeo and predict permeability with our flop predictor Flowdict. The results we will visualize as volume field and streamlines. First of all, we need to generate the microstructure of a glass fiber roving. For that, we will use FiberGeo, which we can find under model FiberGeo. Here, from the pull-down menu, we select Create. As the structure generation takes 30 to 60 seconds, I simply click Generate. And while the roving is generated, I explain you the options I chose. After clicking on Edit for the domain size, enter 200 for the numbers of voxels in X, Y and Z direction. And a voxel length of 1 micron. This leads to a domain of 200 by 200 by 200 microns. For generation and overlap mode, I chose without fiber overlap. A low fiber overlap would be much faster for the generation, but for composites usually, I would recommend generating without overlap as overlapping fibers make no sense for most composite structures. Using isolation distance would also be possible, but often leads to long run times. I click Edit. Here it shows 0.01% overlap, which is good enough for this tutorial, as removing the last tiny bit of overlap would need the most time. The next thing I will change is the distance mode. By default it is set to touching, meaning that the fibers can touch. This can lead to closed paths when predicting permeability, where in reality the fluid would flow through. As we do not want that for our roving, I select Defined Isolation for the Distance Mode. Set the isolation distance to 1 micrometer and click OK. Next, I set the stopping criterion for the generation. For example, you could enter a fixed number of fibers to be generated, or a grammage, density, a weight percentage. I chose a solid volume percentage of 50%, which also means a porosity of 50%. Moving to fiber options, you can choose from a large variety of fiber types. Short fibers, infinite fibers, curved fibers, bundles, and all in different shapes. But we stick to the infinite circular fibers selected by default. As we only need one type of infinite circular fibers, we remove the second one. and set the count of the first one to 100%. For material, glass is already chosen. By clicking on the material, you could also select other materials from our material database. For our roving, glass is just fine. The diameter we leave at 10 micrometers. You can define a constant value, or you can have values from interval. Also different distributions for the diameter are possible a Gaussian distribution or a table of different probabilities for different diameters or a log normal distribution. We select a constant value of 10 microns. As we want to have a roving with a fiber orientation, we will not stick with the default anisotropic direction. Therefore, we added the orientation options. Here we could choose an isotropic orientation and an anisotropic direction define an orientation tensor, or give a specific direction. We choose an XY plane and stick with an angle of 0 degrees. This will lead to fibers oriented in X direction. We click OK. As we remove the overlap, we don't need to define overlap rules for our roving. For the result options, we are fine with just saving the structure we will generate. So we click OK. In the meantime, the structure generation is already finished, and here we see our result viewer. Every time after simulation, the corresponding result file is opened in this result viewer. For our fiber structure, we can for example see that we reached our desired solid volume percentage with an error of only 0.28% and the direction tensor shows that fibers are oriented in X direction. Also, we can see that the remaining overlap is 0.0095% which means that we hit our goal of 0.01% really well. So we can close the result viewer and have a look at our roving and 2D view. 
pre-watch our structure from X direction and can slide through the structure with, with the slider to view all the different slices of our structure. Of course, we can also visualize our structure in 3D with the 3D icon in the toolbar and rotate it with our mouse to view it from all directions. The default color is red, but if we do not like it, we can change the color by clicking on the corresponding icon in the toolbar. We choose light gray as the color for material 1. Here we can also choose certain materialities to be invisible, which in this case makes sense for the air, because we do not want to see the air in our roving, but we do want to see the fibers. We close the color settings dialog again. And if you want to close your dig and reopen the fiber structure later on, this is no problem, as all results are saved on your hard drive. To find the files, right-click on the project folder and select Open Project Folder. There, you can find the GDR file, which is the result file we have already inspected in the result viewer. The corresponding result folder contains the roving structure. Now that we have created our roving, we can move on to predicting probability, which we will do with our module Flowdict. Therefore, select Predict, Flowdict. There, we use the Lear Solver to solve the Stokes Brinkman equation. The Lear Solver is very fast, especially for highly porous material. And as we don't consider porous voxels in our roving, solving the Stokes equation will deliver good results. Again, we have to define simulation settings. We do not need to change the settings for the constituent materials. We could change the materials here if we had not chosen the right materials before. As we use materials already contained in the material database, the physical properties of the fluid are taken from the database and thus are fine. We need to define the boundary conditions. We want to compute all three directions to obtain the full tensor, so we select them all. We could also only simulate flow in one direction, if we are only interested in the probability in z-direction, for example. We did not create a periodic structure, so we cannot use periodic boundary conditions in flow direction without adding inlet and outlet. Instead, we use symmetric boundary conditions. That means that the solver assumes that the structure is mirrored at the boundaries. This way it is ensured to not close the flow path and the boundaries. Next, we define the input for our experiment. We choose a pressure drop of 0.02 Pascal. The mean velocity and the flow rate will be the output of our experiment. Instead, we could also define the desired velocity or the flow rate and compute the other two parameters in the simulation respectively. We also set the tangential boundary conditions to symmetric, again, because the structure is not periodic. Under the solver tab, we define the simulation stopping criteria. Here we stick with an error bound of 0.01%. This means that the simulation stops as soon as the relative difference between the predicted pressure drop and the input pressure drop is smaller than 0.01. The parallelization by default is set to the maximum available number of processes. Since I am running the simulation on my laptop, the maximum number of processes is 8, as the laptop has 8 cores. Under the Equations tab, have a look at the equations the solver will solve when running the simulation. So now we click OK and hit Run to start the flow simulation. The simulation will take a couple of minutes. On my laptop it needed 2-3 to three minutes. In this video we jump immediately to the results. After the simulation is done, the result view is opened again and in the report the first thing to find is the permeability tensor. Here we can observe that the permeability in x-direction is a magnitude higher than in the other two directions. This is what we would expect in a unidirectional composite like this. Below, we can find, for example, the results for velocity and flow rate for all directions. Additional to the results to be found in the report, there are some result plots. We can have a look at the layered pressure in x, y and z direction. The plot for the x-direction is very straight, as the flow happens along the straight fibers. Thus, 
the layer pressure measured for the splur simulations in the other two directions look more interesting. We can also visualize the results in 3D. Therefore, we move to the flow visualization tab and leave the flow field for the set direction selected. Simply click load to load the results to the user interface. Here we can choose which results we want to visualize. As our structure is not large, it will not be too much effort to load them all. So we click OK. Now we can watch the volume field in 3D. We can still see the gray fibers of our structure. To only visualize the volume field, we deactivate the structure with this little checkbox above of the visualization area. Now we only see the results of the flow simulation. Let's move to the volume field tab. Here we can choose for which material are these the results should be shown. As of course the velocity in the glass fibers is zero, we are not interested in the results here. So we deselect the checkbox for material one. Now we only see the results computed for the pore space. We can also choose which result here to visualize with the pull down menu for color. For example, we can choose to show the velocity in that direction. In flow simulation, we can also visualize the flow as streamlines. Therefore, check the Streamlines tab and move to it. Deactivate the volume field and activate the structure again. Turn the structure around and have a look at the flow through the fiber structure. To animate the flow visualization, change the line style from streamlines to streamlets. Click on play and the streamlets move on their path through the structure, really showing you the flow. For additional adjustments on visualization, click the little gear wheel in the bottom right of the visualization panel. This opens the various visualization settings on the right. For example, we increase the line thickness a little bit to enhance the visibility. Additionally, under Streamlets, increase the number of streamlets to 25. Then you can see more streamlets per streamline. Also, you can increase the length of the single streamlets to 0.75, where a length of 1 means that the streamlets connect again to a complete streamline. This way, you can adjust the appearance of the result fields as desired to present the results in a very appealing manner. In this video I showed to you how you can easily predict the impermeability of a glass fiber roving in Geodic. And if you found this tutorial helpful, please check out our Math to Market channel for more Geodic videos. Goodbye!